Today is Tuesday, December 20th. We're talking about one of the most extensive congressional investigations in recent history, finally coming to a close. What serious action the January 6th panel is now recommending and why former President Trump says he's not worried about it. Also, what could be the most significant effort yet to protect nature? Plus, how major pharmacy chains are trying to deal with a nationwide shortage of very common medicines. What's in a record-breaking settlement over kids' privacy in video games? And why some activists are asking people to boycott the new Avatar movie. Those stories and more news, plus Trivia Tuesday, coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. It took 18 months, 10 public hearings, more than 1,000 interviews, and more than a million documents. And now the lawmakers investigating the January 6th Capitol riot say former President Trump needs to face criminal charges. The House panel is formally calling on the Justice Department to charge him with four crimes, inciting an insurrection, obstructing an official proceeding of Congress, conspiracy to defraud the U.S., and conspiracy to make a false statement. In a lengthy summary of their findings, the lawmakers say Trump tried to overturn the election and drum up his supporters to start a riot. But remember, Congress doesn't actually have the power to bring charges. That's up to the Justice Department. But this move is still significant, since it's the first time Congress has ever made such a referral for a former president. And experts say it could put pressure on prosecutors to ultimately press charges. In response, former President Trump is calling the panel's decision political and put out a statement saying, in part, these folks don't get it, that when they come after me, people who love freedom rally around me, it strengthens me. He also repeated accusations that Democrats rigged and stole the 2020 presidential election from him, even though several courts, election authorities, and Trump's Justice Department have all said there was no widespread voter fraud. So far, the Justice Department has not commented on the referrals the committee sent over. Keep in mind, the DOJ is already doing its own investigation into January 6th. Stay tuned. Immigration officials and aid groups have been preparing for a big change on the U.S.-Mexico border this week. But now, that change has, once again, been put on hold. We're talking about Title 42. As we've been telling you, that's the policy that's been letting border officials deport most undocumented adults right away without giving them a legal hearing to claim asylum. It's been in place ever since the early days of the pandemic, out of concern that an influx of migrants could spread COVID-19 even more. And it was supposed to expire tomorrow, meaning more people at the border would be allowed in. But the U.S. Supreme Court stopped the order that was going to let that happen, at least temporarily. The high court is basically just keeping the status quo for now, while it considers what to do long-term, since many Republican-led states want Title 42 to stay in place and ask justices to take action. It's not clear exactly when they'll consider this issue again. So in the meantime, the Biden administration says it's going to keep preparing for Title 42 to go away. It's putting together policies to respond to what's expected to be an unprecedented surge in illegal border crossings, a surge that could quickly overwhelm the border patrol, border cities, and nonprofit shelters. So far, the White House has not commented on what specific policy measures it's planning, but reports say they'll be aimed at discouraging people from trying to cross the border in search of asylum. To be continued. It seems Russia is getting some fresh support for its war in Ukraine. For starters, Russian President Putin visited Belarus this week to talk military cooperation between the two countries, just as Ukraine has been raising concerns that Russia could launch another offensive from Belarus. This was Putin's first visit to Belarus since 2019. And while there, Putin said his troops will conduct joint military exercises with Belarus and will manufacture new military equipment. Meanwhile, Russia and China announced they're going to be holding joint naval drills this week. They'll be firing at targets in the air and sea and using many different weapons. The two countries signed a no-limit strategic partnership just days before Russia invaded Ukraine. Some of the world's top leaders reached a historic deal to protect nature. About 190 countries agreed to preserve 30 percent of the planet's land and oceans by the end of this decade, meaning there will be restrictions on activities like fishing, farming and mining. Plus, they promised to limit the risks of pesticides and cut nutrient runoff from farms. They're tackling the issue of biodiversity loss, which scientists say left unchecked could jeopardize the planet's food and water supplies, as well as several species around the globe. Every country in the United Nations signed on, except the U.S. But President Biden signed an executive order that makes the same kind of commitments. The issue is, to actually hit the targets, Congress will likely have to take action. And that's expected to be tough. 
A study by one research organization found that to actually reverse biodiversity decline by 2030, it would require about $700 billion a year more than what's being spent right now. The deal is not legally binding either, and similar agreements have failed in the past. Still, negotiators who worked on this deal say they've learned from past mistakes and there's reason to be hopeful. All right, we have more news still coming up, but first, let's take a quick break for our sponsor. If you're into scary movies, you might also be into knowing more about the real-life events that are behind some of them, like the horror movie Scream. Yeah, that was inspired by the real crimes of the Gainesville Ripper. The Moms and Murder podcast talked about this and other scary movies in a recent episode, although they also bring a compassionate take to some of the lesser-known stories and help to share information about unsolved cases. Moms and Murder is a true crime podcast by two quick-witted friends and moms who have been behind the mic for over five years. And in that time, the show has gotten over 30 million downloads and counting. Be advised, though, that Moms and Murder is undergoing a name change. So ring in the new year with the new title, Moms and Mysteries, highlighting a real crime every Tuesday. Subscribe to Moms and Murder. Simply search their name on whatever app you're listening on right now. Just open your podcast app of choice, type in Moms and Murders, then hit subscribe. That's Moms and Murders, soon to be Moms and Mysteries, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Some parents may have already noticed it can be tough to find kids' pain and fever medicine right now. There are shortages of acetaminophen and ibuprofen as cases of the flu, COVID-19, and other viruses are spreading around the country. So now big pharmacy chains are putting a cap on just how much you can buy at once. At CVS and Kroger, there's now a two-product limit on purchases of all children's pain relief products in stores and online. And Walgreens is limiting online shoppers to more than six items of children's pain medication, although for now, there is no limit of how much you can purchase inside the store. Doctors and other experts say the shortages are likely to continue through the winter cold and flu season. So if you are a parent or you think you might need children's pain relievers in the near future, experts say you might want to start looking now. The video game maker behind hit games like Fortnite and Fall Guys just got hit with a pretty big fine over charges it broke children's privacy laws and tricked customers into spending millions of dollars. Epic Games is shoveling out more than a half a billion dollars to the Federal Trade Commission. The FTC says Epic collected the personal information of children younger than 13 without notifying their parents or getting parental consent. On top of that, it says the company illegally gave children and teens access to voice chat and texting in their games that the FTC says opened them up to harassment and abuse from other players who were often adult strangers. And the FTC says Epic used misleading features in their games to trick players into spending more money. Overall, Epic Games now owes $520 million that's being broken up into two payments. First, a $275 million fine, which is now the largest ever penalty for violating an FTC rule. Next, Epic will have to spend $245 million to pay back customers, which will be the largest ever refund in a gaming case. Epic says it will pay both because it wants to, quote, be at the forefront of consumer protection and provide the best experience for our players. Plus, Epic says it has addressed the issues that got it in trouble, so there are now safeguards in place. Harvey Weinstein has been found guilty again. In his second criminal trial, after nine days of jury deliberations, the disgraced Hollywood film executive was convicted of raping and sexually assaulting a woman in Los Angeles. Weinstein, who is now 70 years old, is already serving a 23-year prison sentence for other rapes in New York and now faces up to 24 more years in prison, so he'll likely spend the rest of his life behind bars. And his legal troubles don't end there. British prosecutors announced they would also be charging Weinstein in the UK with two counts of indecent assault. Weinstein has continued to claim that he's innocent. He and his legal team are currently appealing his New York conviction. Since the Me Too movement began, more than 100 women have come forward with personal stories of sexual assault involving Weinstein. So there's a new social media campaign going around trying to convince people not to see a highly anticipated new release. We're talking about Avatar The Way of Water. Certain Native American and indigenous groups are calling for a boycott. They say both the original movie, which was the highest grossing movie of all time, and the new sequel are racist. It's because many themes and imagery in the science fiction movie are very similar to historical indigenous cultures in North and South America. And director James Cameron has said before that his characters are based on indigenous Americans. Well, some activists say that's cultural appropriation and that it could hurt people's understanding of real Native American history. Some comments director James Cameron made a decade ago have also resurfaced where he implied Native people could have fought harder to avoid genocide. So far, Cameron hasn't commented on this latest criticism. But the original movie also faced calls for a boycott. And back then, he denied that Avatar is racist, telling ABC News that the movie, quote, 
asks us to open our eyes and truly see others, respecting them even though they are different. So far, the sequel debuted at number one at the weekend box office. Well, someone just bought an iconic piece of movie history. The original mechanical model from E.T., the extraterrestrial, went for nearly $2.6 million. For its time, back in 1981 when it was designed, this alien prop was considered top of the line as good as it gets. It took a team of people working E.T.'s arms, legs, mouth, eyes, and more to bring him to life on the big screen. Before computers made CGI graphics widely and easily available, props like this animatronic figure were what gave movies their special effects. Well, that's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. So I realized over the last year that parenting, unfortunately, does not come with a user manual. Even though as a journalist, I tend to do a lot of research, it frankly stresses me out that there is so much conflicting information for how to go about this very important job of parenting. Well, therapists are trained to help us navigate all of these big life transitions and new challenges in life. Therapy has helped me better cope with the stress and newness of it all and to trust my own instincts and capabilities more. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, which celebrity has hosted Saturday Night Live more times than anyone else? You can answer the question and play along with us on Instagram. Find and follow us at newsworthypod and look for the trivia quiz in our Instagram stories today. As for last week's trivia question, where was the Salvation Army's Christmas collection kettle first introduced? The answer is San Francisco. The whole tradition dates back to 1891. The Salvation Army captain wanted to address the Bay Area's poverty and hunger issues during the holidays. So he placed a pot at Oakland Ferry Landing with a sign that read, keep the pot boiling. And with that, the iconic red kettle was born. These days, thousands of red kettles are stationed outside stores like Walmart and Kroger in every state in American territory. And each year, volunteers help keep things going. All of the donations that come in stay in the community where they're given and go toward things like food, shelter, disaster assistance, and addiction recovery programs. This year, the Red Kettle campaign kicked off on Thanksgiving Day, and it runs through Christmas Eve. All right, thank you so much for listening today. We'll be back with another news roundup tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 